Hey guys, Dan here. Welcome to this video. Today we're talking about IRFFB, what it is and how to install it. I always read about IRFFB. It's been noticed a lot in my chat. Have you tried it? And I was like, mm, no. I read the iRacing forums and it always seemed like super complicated to install and it was always like, no. But actually it's super, super easy to install. I'll show you how and what it does. Before we get to it, I'm streaming live on Twitch every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Maybe you want to come and say hi and chat a bit about sim racing. Links in the description below. But yeah, IRFFB, it is like an alternative force feedback solution for iRacing. If you didn't know, iRacing samples force feedback at 60 Hz, which is very low compared to other games. For example, I think Assetto Corsa Competizione has like 333 Hz or something. But yeah, with the 60 Hz, you lose quite a bit of detail, a bit of smoothness. With a direct drive, with a modern direct drive, there are interpolation filters that basically solve that issue a little bit. But IRFFB is like a different approach. It takes the telemetry output from iRacing, which is sampled at 360 Hz, and basically does its own force feedback from it. That will just give you a smoother feel and you get more details, especially like road texture or when you drive over curbs. Hard to describe, you need to try it out. Also, like I would recommend just try it out. Don't look too much at the numbers because it adds some latency. I will show it to you later. Just see if it works for you. Even with a direct drive, I personally think it's great, even though I use a Simacube 2 Pro. Um, but yeah, everybody is different. So give it a try. It's super easy to install. And if you don't like it, just don't use it. But yeah, IRFFB, there are two different modes uh, it operates in. There's the telemetry based mode and there's the direct mode. In the telemetry based mode, as you can see here on this website, um, it just takes the telemetry output from iRacing and generates its own force feedback from it. The downside is it adds about 29 milliseconds of latency. If you want to know why, just read this website. I think it's not that important now. It, just keep that in mind, 29 milliseconds. My personal experience, I can't feel the 29 milliseconds, but yeah, it is what it is. And then there's the direct mode, which basically takes the original force feedback from iRacing, just does some upsampling and filtering. This is exactly what, for example, when you have a Simacube, uh, what the force reconstruction filter is doing. So it's, it's kind of similar, uh, less delay, four milliseconds, and then it adds the effects from the telemetry, like oversteer, understeer, road effects, stuff like that. The pro is less latency. The downside is you still have the original force feedback, but Try both of these modes out and um, if you like it, use it. If you don't like it, let everyone in the internet know that they are wrong if they use it, I guess, right? That's how the internet works. <laughs> but yeah, uh, for the telemetry based mode, you do not need VJoy. And for the direct mode, you need VJoy. So I would just recommend to install VJoy. It's super easy to set up and I'll show you how. All right, for VJoy, you go to this website here. I'll put the link in the description below and you want to download the release version 2.1.8 build 39. So click here and just download the setup. And once it's done, you click on it, install it. Yes, next, next, install. All right, VJoy installed. Now you can go to the VJoy configuration app. Just type VJoy in the search bar and go to configure VJoy. You don't, you don't even have to do that, but it kind of triggers my OCD that we only use one axis, but there are like 2000 axes configured. So what I do is just disable all of this stuff. Zero, zero, apply. Okay, so now we have one virtual joystick device with an X access. Okay, after you install VJoy, gotta restart your PC. So we'll be right back. All right, PC is restarted. The next thing you want to do is download IRFFB version 1.5.6. Just click here and download it and then copy it to a location you want to use. I put mine here. Just double click it and this is how the UI looks. Next step is Go to the search bar, type in USB, go to the setup USB game controllers. And then you have this VJoy device here that we just installed. You see only one axis. You got to calibrate it. So go to settings, calibrate, next, next. And then you can display raw data. And when you turn the wheel, this should change from zero to 65,000 something. Rotate it from bump stop to bump stop. There you go. Next, finish. Uh, VJoy is calibrated. 
when you start IRFFB, sometimes it gives you an error that some DLL is missing. Then just download uh, this Visual C++ redistributable for Visual Studio 2015. <laughs> Link in the description, just download it and install it and then the error message should be gone. But yeah, this is basically it. IRFFB is installed, BJOY is installed. When you see this here, acquired the DI device with 128 buttons and zero POV, VJOY driver version, blah, blah, blah. If you get this message, everything works. Force feedback device is obviously your wheelbase. Force feedback type, we have the, uh, the telemetry based mode is the 360 and 360 interpolated. 360 interpolated, I think is running at 720 Hertz, but shouldn't make a big difference. Try it out, telemetry mode and direct mode. So to make sure it's working, you start iRacing. We're going to uh, fire up the LMP2 at Sebring because Sebring is, is a track I think it's always a great track to test force feedback because uh, Sunset Bend is so bumpy. You notice the difference there quite a bit. Okay, Sebring. And see you when the game has loaded in, so in about two years. Okay, game loaded. So next thing you want to do is recalibrate your steering. Go to options, go to steering and just do the, do the calibration again. If it goes from zero to 65,000, you're good. It shouldn't be like minus 32,000 to uh, plus 32,000. Okay, done. Done, done, done. And you see here, these, these force feedback things are grayed out now. This is because we use IRFFB now. Okay, let's quickly go back to the settings here. Uh, minimum force, I don't use it. I think it's useful for non-direct drive wheels, but Try it out. Uh, maximum force is the force feedback slider. Keep in mind, more Newton meters actually means less force feedback. It's a bit weird, but it means like if the steering rack in the game generates 65 Newton meters of torque, your wheel would put out 100% force feedback. And if, for example, if you set this to five, it means like in-game would only have to be five Newton meters of torque on the steering rack to output 100% force feedback. So. I use quite high force feedback settings, um, but play around with the slider and start with something high. Damping, if you feel like the steering is a little bit too notchy or so, add some damping. I typically have it like around 10% or so. And then you have the effects that IRFFB generates. So suspension bumps is like to better feel the road. Just try it out, try it out. You will notice the difference immediately. Understeer means if you steer too much the force will get lighter that simulates like the the front tires drifting over the road which uh, generates less forces than if they would grip sop effect is something with oversteer i think it means seat of pants or something <laughs> like i said just try it out it's a feeling thing i like to have like a little bit of the effects i know people who don't use any effects at all and just use the uh, telemetry mode I kind of like the uh, direct mode, the direct filtered mode with a few effects. I also like the just the regular 360 hertz mode. So try this out. Like I said, I'm not saying this is like the holy grail of force feedback. You might like it, you might dislike it. I personally like it. I don't know why, maybe it's like a coincidence. I felt like I was a bit quicker with IRFFB. Even though most of the time I have to say I don't use it because it's another app you have to start and I just tend to forget it and then I'm so used to the iRacing force feedback that I I just forget <laughs> to start it but uh, try it out we're gonna do a lap you will immediately notice it that the force feedback will be different we're gonna use the 360 um, telemetry mode here all right and you can like immediately feel it like driving over the uh, over these over this road that you feel more from the road like curbs are more noticeable it will probably take a few laps to get used to because it feels a bit different it kind of reminds me more how uh, the ACC force feedback feels like oh hi mouse cursor we don't need you you can just feel more from the roads and from the car I think again I don't Oh, I have to move the microphone because it's a little bit in the way. Uh, I don't think iRacing force feedback is like particularly bad. Or maybe it's just because I'm used to it. But you can feel so much more with IRFFB. And I personally think even with a direct drive, it's worth trying out. 
um, because you still you get the 360 hertz force feedback from the telemetry. I mean, the Simicube has the the force reconstruction filters. It is an interpolation filter like IRFFB does in the uh, direct modes, but you still have the effects if you use the direct mode. And if you use the the telemetry mode, you basically have a different force feedback. Just try it out. For example. Oversteer. Let's try. Let's try the oversteer here in the corner. Like you will feel force feedback, strong, 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 and then you. Wait, I can't oversteer here. Then when you steer too much, the forces will get less. You can basically feel when you are starting to understeer. Did I say oversteer? You feel the understeer. Like the forces on the wheel will be less. And like LMP2 around sunset bends with IRFFB, it's just a completely different experience. You can feel like every every bump in the road here oh uh, and you can also nearly feel the wall here <coughs> yeah that was a perfect sunset band but yeah like you can probably see it in the wheel here it's like everything is a bit more detailed like I said I personally don't notice the delay in the force feedback um, but yeah what I noticed is uh, the grass feels weird when you when you use IRFFB and you and you're in the grass it feels weird. But I mean we are all good sim racers and we never drive on the grass, right? So yeah. Okay, when you when you uh, are done with driving, you can go back to the software and you will see. For example, I set it now to maximum force of 30 because I like a strong force feedback and I had like three percent of clipping. You want to keep that to a minimum, like ideally 0%, but it's not possible with the Simicube 2 Pro with the settings that I use. Or you have to get the ultimate. <laughs> um, if you have clipping, you lose detail in the force feedback, basically. So try to keep this close to zero by increasing this number, which means decreasing the force feedback. Also, like, don't, don't be afraid to try like ridiculously high settings, for example, understeer 100. Then just go out and try the understeer situation. You can probably understeer out of the pit lane here. So steer more on purpose and you will notice like here. Here's where the wheels start to grip and then as soon as you steer too much you will notice there's less force on the on the steering wheel. I personally think it's super useful. It's something that I love on ACC. You can feel understeer. I cannot feel understeer on iRacing default force feedback, but maybe I'm just bad. Um, but yeah, that's it basically for the video. Try it out. I'm not giving you my settings because I don't really know what my settings are. It's like I, I use different settings for every car. You can also have like car specific settings here. So if you want to check that, you can like, for example, have the LMP2 with more understeer effects and the uh, GT3s with less or something. Um, play around with it and let me know in the comments down below if, if you like it or if you dislike it. I said it I said it in the video like 17 times already. I also, I, I, I really think with a direct drive it also is worth trying out. I like it, you might dislike it, but uh, yeah. Keep in mind, every time you wanna use IRFFB, the app needs to run in the background and try both modes. Maybe you can feel the latency in the force feedback. I personally can't. I know a lot of people who are very happy to use this. I know a lot of people who tried it out and didn't like it. Give it a try and just do what you prefer, I guess. But yeah, guys, uh, that's it for the video. If you have any problems setting it up, make sure to join our discord link in the description below uh, a lot of helpful people there if you just want to chat hang out with uh, a lot of people who like sim racing if you like the video maybe consider subscribing to the channel and give the video a like and i hope to see you in the next video bye bye